Hey, how's it going? I know, I know. Crazy hectic, right? Well, sit back and relax and welcome welcome to the Mom and Pop Spot. Help me welcome my dad and the host of the show, St. Patrick. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the first official episode of the Mom and Pop Spot podcast, the podcast that will be everything parented related. I am your host, Mr. St. Patrick, and we got the extraordinary engineer dip behind the scenes. What's happening? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the delay. I apologize. I apologize. You'll get it. Yeah. I'm trying to look for the words before anything. Yeah. So just be patient with me. I mean, it's my first episode. I'm still trying to figure everything out. Mm -hmm. But um, how's everyone doing today? And you forgot to introduce a person, didn't you? No, I'm, it's my next part. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, I'm doing well, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, and how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> uh, still nice, and uh, s'mores warm outside. So hot that chickens are laying hard-boiled eggs outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the jokes, yes. We have uh... yeah. Yeah, it's a long lap. Yeah, it's a long lap. They really get weak, dog. Yeah. But uh, we have an important episode today. Uh, with this being the official first episode, we have a special guest host today. I thought it was only fitting to have my sister on the show. Her name is Christina, wife, mother of three kids, and she is a Pisces. So watch out, people, because them Pisces scare me. <laughs> Actually, my mom's a Pisces, too, so <laughs> I'm in trouble. But um, she is also a certified jump roper and practices the Roger Rabbit dance in her free time. Oh, yeah, that's what wow. I like to do. Okay. <laughs> so welcome, Christina. <laughs> yeah. so we can just catch you randomly doing the Roger Rabbit. Hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you feeling about this show? Uh, a little nervous, but I mean, yeah, go with the flow. Yeah, that was me yesterday. I mean, as you can tell, when you watch the show, you're going to be like, man, like it was quick. You can tell he was nervous. Uh, how's the family? Everybody's doing well, working, getting my daughter ready for senior year. My son's... Uh, try to move up in his department but yeah everybody's doing well that's good that's good you have a daughter that's about to be done with high school uh, i was just thinking about that how i'm gonna have one that's gonna be uh not too far from entering high school um has she mentioned her plans for when school's over or have you guys had that conversation yeah she definitely wants to go to college she is thinking about being a um ultrasound tech if not she wants to do designing okay um she has a couple of things in mind, but yeah, right now she's wanting to for sure pursue in a uh, ultrasound tech. So. Okay, that's nice. Go to NAU and if not, maybe ASU, but yeah, she she has a plan. Yeah, that's good. Um, are you helping her with those plans? Uh, we started looking into it, but like really digging deep, no, not till she starts school and talks to her counselor and go from there and see what options that she needs to take or what roads that she you know she needs to pursue in. Okay. Uh, what message do you have for not just her, but for them as they're entering adulthood? Uh, right now, I mean, being as young and how the world is so crazy out there, just to keep their eyes open and just watch their surroundings. I mean, it's just so crazy out there in the world. So, yeah, I mean, they got to enjoy life and get out there and, you know, experiment, experiment a bit wisely, obviously, but just to know their surroundings because it's, it's a scary world out there. And thinking about that, I mean, how would you say your childhood was? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> not as uh, crazy as it is now. I mean, obviously, we were able to go out and hang out on the streets and ride our bikes, play basketball, you know, and, and be out until the lights came on and then we had to go home. But I mean, as far as now, nah, I mean, they go out, but I, I even keep her at a certain distance because I don't. I don't trust anybody around here just because of everything you hear on the news. So, The way that you grew up, has that changed you as a parent because we're in a different time? Yeah, it's made me to be more, um, I guess, have a better eye opening to, again, my surroundings. I mean, because we were able to pretty much, even though our you know parents were somewhat strict on us, but we were still able to, to be free and like to go outside and hang out mm -hmm. versus now. I mean, you just... Got to be careful and watch it. Seemed more fun back then. I mean, we were able to go to like Ronero, Rolero to like all night, mm -hmm. great, uh, all night skate and stuff like that. So it definitely was fun. 
it seemed fun back then, but can I ask you guys a question? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Do you think that that we're going overboard as parents with what we're doing? That that our parents were a lot happier than what we are because this umbrella parenting shit that we wanted to do. I have to honestly because say I, that. I'm, I'm gonna say one more thing too yeah. before we say this. Uh-huh. Crime was a lot worse in yes. the times when we grew up. It was, yeah. Kidnapping yeah. was a lot worse in the time we grew up. Yes, it was. Gang life, murder, crack. Oh yeah. Everything was a lot worse. Yeah. Honestly, Why are we though, I so... think it's just more eye opening now because of the social and, social yeah. media. You think it's media. just we getting inundated with news and information? Exactly. So it, I think so. It's, yeah, that, I it's think the part that's of true. it being like yeah. recorded now. Like yeah. now, Versus everybody then has... it wasn't like, right, every, and yeah. we didn't see it, so yeah. it, it was like it wasn't even there. Right. Yeah. It's and now we just get so inundated with all of it that we just it's kind of overwhelming us. Yeah. Right. And I'm I'm guilty of that. I keep my kids very sheltered. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm always. I mean, no, I'm, most I'm, most people do nowadays. Yeah, I'm just worried about every single thing now. It's just because now with everything coming out, I worry all the time about right, everything. Right, yeah. well, right. That's just with anybody though, too. I mean, but now it's your your worrying is a whole lot more versus mm-hmm. you know back then because like again we didn't have phones, we didn't have social media, we didn't have any of that. Yeah. So I mean, it's always been there, but now it's just you know. Man, I just think like, damn, man, my mother. She was free, bro. She, yeah. she, she did, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're sitting around worried 24-7. Yeah. We grew up in some of the worst crime times yep. in that time where the cities were seeing 600, 700 murders. And we were seeing serial killers on the, like, all the time. Yeah. Like, we don't even see that anymore. That yeah. are, the serial killers are gone. Yeah. That, that isn't happening. Yeah. Um, but we are way more keen to, to being... You know, keeping our kids close and our, our parents didn't, they didn't, they weren't like that. They were having a good time working. Yeah. We were latchkey kids, most yeah. of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? We we went home with our kids. People would not do that now. In fact, people would probably call the police on they you would, if they yeah. saw mm-hmm. you doing yep. that. Yeah. That's how, that's how crazy we've gotten. Yeah. Um. I don't know, man. To, you know, with everything, I'm a Libra. I see both sides, man. And I, yeah. I think it's a point that we may see a, a, some problems with what we're doing. Like it may, we may... It may be some issues that come. I mean, we're we're doing the best that we can. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer for any of these things, but it may be some consequences one day for this, that what we're trying to do for the kids, trying to keep them from, maybe we don't, trying to keep them from getting injured. Yeah. We also make these kids too fragile. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> afraid of that too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's a good, good balance, man. I don't know, man. What's the answer on that one? That's yeah, hard. it's something I'm still trying to figure out because I'm more on the shelter end. I'm like, man, I can't, I can't be that. I'm right, like, I can't. Be I understand. Like, yeah, I get it, man. Yeah, but I mean, the kids do need to learn and get out too, and right. know and, yeah. and be. They the they gotta go through some exactly right. Yeah, that. they do. Because otherwise, I'm just making them kind of weak in a sense. Right. Well, and that's how I am with my son right now. He's about to be 22, and like he just had his first vacation with um my brother and my cousins and you know he was like mom i'm gonna go i'm like okay like, <laughs> right. i really didn't want him to go but i mean at the same time he's old enough you know he's a good kid so right. yeah. like go have fun go you know live your life or whatever obviously be wise and smart but mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's he tough, has to go man. yeah he has to go and enjoy himself yeah it's tough it's tough it's a tough world man yeah. so a little backstory we weren't brought up in an ideal family home um, as both of our parents are separated, along with 50% of other families, you know, mm-hmm. at that time, and even still today, they got separated when we were both little. And honestly, I don't remember much around that time. Uh, they did their best in providing us the, the life that they could. And at times, I didn't understand it, uh, what they were going through. I grew frustrated, confused, and hurt. But as times passed, I forgave them for not understanding. I forgive myself for carrying that emotion. Um, I have a new love for both of them now. Um, as grandparents, uh, especially because of what they were able to show and not show. I believe at least for me, it made me a better parent today. I know it wasn't easy, especially for me being as bizarre and awkward and amusing as I am and still am to today. Um, But I'm coming to realization of some of the struggles now as a kid um, and with my kids challenging me with things. With that being said, today's show, I'm going to bring out my parents. Uh, I'm going to ask them raw and sensitive questions that will help me better understand me as a parent. And hopefully it doesn't get me a spanking, a shoe thrown at me, (laughs) but uh, hopefully they can acknowledge the essence of it. Um, And before I bring out 
the first guest, I have to read a quote that crossed my path this morning that really resonated with me. And I just keep thinking about it. It was, I don't know, it was really good to me. It's a quote by Dr. Awasan that says, once you start getting to know your parents, you start realizing that they're also humans who have also made mistakes. They've had horrible things happen to them and good things happen to them. Understanding that your parents like you have personal experiences outside of being your caregiver gives you the ability to really see them as human beings who you can connect with. With that being said, I had to really think about this quote because it says a lot in so little of a phrase. Growing up, uh, I put a lot of blame as immature as an immature child. Uh, I say immature loosely because a child doesn't quite understand. I do, however, have now come to the awareness that I'm not my parents. Uh, they had to deal with things I probably won't ever know, and it's selfish to try to put myself in their shoes. When they had to deal with uh, personal obligations and uncomfortable challenges, uh, excuse me, personal oblations and uncomfortable challenges. You hear me say that a lot, be, uh, but there's no rules to parenting, but we're all doing um, our very best. And Dip, uh, what did you think? Um, what did you think of that quote? It's dope, man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's absolutely the truth, man. When you when you're a kid, it's it's hard to see things from that perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you you grow and as an adult, you you should be able to look back and, and see things from from their perspectives now that you're an adult and and be able to um, uh, just be able to em emphasize more or or have more empathy for for the situation that they were in and, and right. you were put into. Uh -huh. uh, so you just it's it's hard, man. It's it's not easy, and and raising kids is is there's no books to this shit. It is not. You know what I mean? There's no there's nothing that says uh, you can go read this book and it's gonna come out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Every kid's different, every situation. So it's it's a great quote, man. That that yeah. really speaks towards those things that people should be able to to uh, see, but not all of us see all uh -huh. of, uh, at all at all. Sometimes. Yeah. It takes them losing your parents before you see these things. Yeah. So it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah. But that's definitely a, a great quote. With um, that also being said, Christina, do you ever see yourself not being able to tell, not being able to be fully open with your kids? No. I've always, ever since they were little, I've always been, that was my one main rule that I've always told them. I said, don't lie to me, don't hide stuff, and always be open and honest. Okay. Because, I mean, it's easier to deal with that than you hiding and lying about it and then, you know, then it, it's just only going to be worse from there. But I've always been open and honest with them. Okay. So no matter what it is, if, you know, they liked a boy, they liked a girl, they want to do this or do that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And something as simple as, you know, like when my son started, you know, like I said, liking a girl, whatever, mom, I think this girl's cute. Okay. Well, you know, what about it? Oh, nothing. I just, you know, wanted to let you know, or the same thing with Monique or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's simple as that, you know, and then if it's something more, you know, serious and okay then you know well what happened you know tell me yeah. about it and then how are we going to work through it from there okay so yeah i mean that's always been my thing be open and honest and you know it's easier to deal with yeah regardless of what it is so. okay so before i bring out my first guest we need to go pay some bills because the lights are about to go off right now so <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> let's do it Abari entertainment films present there's only one name for news with Damon and Aisha. Habari Live Podcast. Habari Entertainment. A race against time. On a quest for glory. Habari News Weekly, HabariEntertainment.com. Catch us for more. Visit us, HabariEntertainment.com. Welcome back. My first guest is the one who gave birth to me, who at times I don't always see eye to eye, but carry her strong passion and witty characteristics, like dressing up in costumes or just trying to cheer up the next person up. She may be little, but this lady comes with passion and might. This woman has gone through what I may not understand, but today, I try to gain some perception from it. Please welcome Jovita. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> 
sounds weird calling you by your first name, so I apologize. But, <laughs> but, You're the host, man. You get a pass today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, only today. <laughs> yeah. But let the audience know how many kids you have in their age ranges. I have seven kids. Um, the oldest <laughs> is 39, and the youngest just turned 21. Nice. Nice. Uh, what was that like? Um, it was hard. It's, um, I still get emotional. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I put you guys, sorry, I put you guys in sets. Like you're my first set. Uh -huh. And then I have the second set and then I have Jeffrey. Okay. <laughs> but it, it was hard. Um, it, it was challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when you, you guys would say, that's my half sister mm -hmm. or, um, who do you belong to? And sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever I would have you, everybody would say, is that your kid? Because you were so much lighter yeah. than me. And I'd be like, yeah, doesn't he look like me? <laughs> yeah. But um, it was hard. It was challenging. It was hard. At what age did you have your first child? Um, I had just turned 18. Okay. Literally 18. <laughs> was that a common thing um, at your age at that time? It was. Yeah. It was, um, you know, I wanted to go into the Marines and um, things changed a different direction. You know, I had her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, in the next part, I'm going to ask, ask you some, a series of questions. Um, I don't have to say how to answer because I know you won't sugarcoat anything. Uh, you won't hurt my feelings. And now that I'm older, it'll give me a new light on what uh, I've always wondered. So, um, mom, be gentle, be gentle. <laughs> they're not bad questions. They're not bad. Um, now that you see the parent that I am today, is there anything that's hard for you to discuss about me to me? No, I'm, I'm very proud of you uh. from, um, how you went in from one home to another home, um, one school to another school, um, the challenges of, you being white or you're acting white or you're acting Mexican, you're not Mexican. It, I'm very proud because you came over that. You know, you, mm -hmm. you had that challenge. You dealt with it. We dealt with that as a family. And, um, you know, and I'm just very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. One of the memories I always remember about us is when I was younger and used to take care of Lorenzo. And I would always go with you. And granted, it wasn't much, but I seem to enjoy those moments the most because it was the time that I got to bond with you. Uh, what was your best memory with me? The best memory with you is when your grandmother would pick up Christina mm -hmm. and um, it would just be me and you time. Mm -hmm. And so I got to play with you. Um, we would go out to eat lunch um, and we would just sit there pop popcorn and um, just watch movies. Yeah. But it was just our time. Yeah. Um, to enjoy those moments, you've had kids from three different times in your life. What would you say is the easiest? The easiest? <laughs> um, I don't think there was an easiest with all of us kids. I mean, I, there wasn't. Granted, I was a good one. I was a good one out of all of us. But I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> she looked at you. Like, <laughs> I think yes, were... I was. The, I was the better one out of all of them. Mm -hmm. I think you were more the challenging one. <laughs> yeah, but it was you, and then it was Patrick, um, Cecilia. Um, you guys really, um, you challenged me. I guess what, I'm, <laughs> what I mean by easiest is with the three different times, it's just, there might be one time where you had more support. There might be another time where you had like, um, it just seemed because you may have known something at this point. Like, let's say Jeffrey, in a sense. Um, you might have already kind of knew how everything was going to go. Where as a first time mom, you're like, shoot. Even like ideally with me, um, You'd like to believe it gets easier as you get older, but for me, it seems to be more challenging as you need more energy and more and to be more alert because with Elliot, I'm like, shoot, like he's walking on the edge of the couch, he 
busted his eyes, he got two black eyes. Like it's just he's keeping me on my toes. And I would like to say it was easier with the first set of boys, but it's just like it's I think with the with the second set, <laughs> your your sisters, um, it was a lot easier with them. Uh-huh. Um having you and Christina was so hard. Uh-huh. It, it was just hard. Um, but with the second set, you know, just the girls and then Tommy was born. I think that was the easiest. Okay. Yeah. And, and Jeffrey, he, he wasn't the easiest. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so get that true yeah. out of your head. <laughs> if you never had kids, what would your life be like today? Uh, I wanted to move to New York. I wanted uh-huh. to stay over there, um, become a fashion designer, mm-hmm. um, model, um, and just flight travel attendant. the world. A flight attendant? Yeah, yeah. I remember the story. Flight, about the attendant, flight attendant, but I also wanted just to travel. Yeah. Travel the world. Okay. Um, thirty percent of parents have a daily fear that their kids are going to get hurt. I speak of that because I do that every single day. Um, like I mentioned earlier with Elliot, you know, as I'm going to work every day, I'm like, shoot, like, are the boys going to be okay? Um, Ethan started getting onto social media. And now I'm like, shoot, okay, what is he doing? So I'm trying to be more open with them. But at the same time, that fear still, um, you know, kind of lingers over my head all the time. How do you, um, as a parent, what were some of your fears? My fears is, um, well, with the girls, um, and Monique, my mm-hmm. granddaughter, um, is, are they okay? If they're going to work, they're coming back, uh, going into the car. I mean, I have, I bought them tasers. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have mace for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I even gave it to my granddaughter. She's like, Nana, I can't have this at school. <laughs> <laughs> but for the boys, because they're so young, I just don't. I, I fear every day for them. I'm like, okay. are they okay? You know, I, I'll text Ethan every once in a while. Hey, you know, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. And he's fine. Um, as far as the boys, you know, my boys, uh, like you guys, mm-hmm. I fear that you're not racing. You're not drinking and driving. You're not getting into fights. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's my fear. Okay. And, there's, there's times where it's going through my head and I can't sleep. Okay. You know. How do you overcome those fears, though? I don't think you ever overcome them. No? I, at least I, I don't. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out how not to have so much anxiety. Well, like I think you'll have more anxiety when <laughs> they're out on their own. Yeah. You know, um, I think, like I... Think about you, Melissa, are you guys okay? Do you have enough money? Do you have food? You know, how are the boys? You know, are yeah. your bills being paid? Christina, she, I more or less grew up with her. So she's like, like the one I really go to if mm-hmm. I'm really, really needing somebody. Yeah. It's like, she's my daughter, but she's my friend. Mm-hmm. Like Cecilia, you know, she'll come to me Um when she knows that, hey, mom, something's wrong with mom, you know. <clears throat> um, but I don't know. I just worry about all you guys. There's nobody different. I don't um, favor one than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Yeah. So. Were you ever given advice as a parent before you became a parent? And if so, what was that advice? Say that again. Like before you became a parent, where was has anybody ever given you advice? No. <laughs> in regards to parenthood, or even you know up to this day, like has anything ever like stuck with you and been like, man, like I'll always remember this because this person told me this about being a parent. Um. No. Yeah. No, because you know, my my mom is from an older generation. Mm-hmm. You don't give out advices. Um, you're not warned about anything um, as far as growing up, maturing, um, having a period, having, you know, just different stuff. You're, you're not warned. You just go to the bathroom and say, oh, shit, 
you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm bleeding to death. What happened? You know, yeah. it's, it's all scary. You know, nobody tells you about how to raise your kids. You know, they just say what you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Hey, you're doing that wrong. Hey, you need to get your kid and you need to whip that ass. You know, that's, that's the way we were brought up. Yeah. You know, when you first got pregnant, what was that conversation like with your parents? Oh, geez. My dad didn't talk to me. <laughs> I think he didn't talk to me until Christina was born. Oh, wow. Um, my mom was like, like, I ruined her whole world. Yeah. You know, but, um, but as when she came, you know, she was, she was good. Yeah. You know, everybody was good. Except for when I would ask to my sisters to babysit. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was a colicky baby, so she cried all the time. <laughs> And so, you know, I remember my sister, <laughs> yeah, my sister's like, I'm not babysitting for you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, you were pregnant with me in the 80s when fanny packs and neon was a thing. Crack and pot were at all time. I think they were like at a pandemic. Sometimes I wonder my train of thought and how I struggle to focus on at times. Um, did you ever smoke or drink while being pregnant with me? No. No. Uh, or did you have friends? Because you said that a lot of people were pregnant during that time. Did you ever encounter people at that time doing that? No. No. You just didn't do it because um, the doctors warned you, hey, you do this, your baby's going to come out, you know, Down mm -hmm. syndrome or something's going to, you're going to have a deformity baby or something. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, who's your favorite child and why? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course um, me. <laughs> <laughs> what is something you wish you could tell the parent in you? you as a child um so looking back at your life and you're like everything that you went through and you're having your own twin and you can say okay you're gonna go through this all over again what advice would you give yourself i don't know i i wouldn't know i yeah yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't even know how to answer that. Um, granted, my boys are older now. What advice do you give me as a parent? What advice? Yes. Um, you need to be more um, bringing them around. You, you need to not put a bubble around them. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see them more often. Um, I do have a lot of medical stuff that I, I do drive, I only drive to work and I come back home. Mm -hmm. Um, Jeff's always driving me around. Um, I lost my hearing, so I am deaf. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's just, um, I can having a hard time walking, going through a lot of procedures, back surgeries. Um, I would just like to see them. I would, yeah, and I apologize. You know. I mean, that's that's my fault because I should be bringing them out around. I just get it's it's confusing because it's part of me is lazy, and the other part is just like I just don't want to take them around because someone's going to say something about them. It's just it's that part see, of being. And sheltered. you shouldn't feel that way because I mean, like you, the last time I think you ever took the boys, you said well, nobody acknowledges them. <clears throat> well. The, I was watching the mm -hmm. boys and all they had was that tablet. Yeah. I remember when my, when we would go to my grandparents' house, uh -huh. we had to go and say hi to them. We had to hug them and we mm -hmm. had to sit there and we had to have a conversation with them. Uh -huh. Even though we didn't know what they were saying because they spoke Spanish and we don't, <laughs> <laughs> but we still sat there and they taught us how to crochet. They taught us how to needlepoint or you know, um, my grandfather would take us outside and we'd learn how to plant, um, do the, the planting or, um, pick the peaches or whatever off the trees. Yeah. Um, I know that when <clears throat> you bring the boys over, uh -huh. they're constantly on that thing. I'm very guilty of that. I'll just, and, um, I don't like that. Yeah. I, I, it's just me personally. Like when I go out to a restaurant, uh -huh. And I'm at fault at it, too. Um, I'll look around at the table, like this last outing we had. I looked uh -huh. at the table, and this was you guys. Actually, I took a picture of that. <laughs> and I, was, I, I think I was I the only one that looked, wasn't on the phone. I wasn't on the phone. Yeah. Mm. I kind of <laughs> looked, and I was like, now we're here for dinner. 
what's going on? And no one's engaged. No mm, one's yeah. conversating. No, and the only one that was talking to me was Elliot. Well, kind of, because he just kept looking and yeah. <laughs> giving me his food, yeah. you know, but it's just, I just feel that put the phones down, put the tablets down, mm-hmm. and sit there and have a conversation. Yeah. Even when you go visiting some somebody, yeah. leave the tablet at home. Yeah. <clears throat> I even agree. in the car somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And I, like I said, I'll, I'm very guilty of it because I do that a lot. <laughs> well, yeah. In the end, what do you want your legacy to say about you as a parent and as a grandparent? Um, I don't know. You guys already think of me as the crazy mom or um, everybody knows me as Mama Joe. Um, I've always helped out everybody. Um, taking care of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, just the crazy one, I guess. <laughs> I don't think that, it's well, crazy, crazy. It's not necessarily like in a bad thing. Like you're crazy, like you're, you're fun crazy, or fun, like yeah, fun crazy. Crazy can be all kinds of things. Not like, and I don't necessarily see it as I mean. crazy. I just think it's <laughs> misunderstood because I see a lot of myself when I think of you. You know, even as simple as the things as just dressing up in the costumes. People think like, oh man, you're. You're weird. You're, you know, yeah. down for doing that. And it's like, they don't realize the point behind it. Yeah. There might be someone that comes across with me being in the costume, you know, dressing up as, I don't know, say Olaf or whatever the case is. And that person will smile later on. They'll come back to me and they'll be like, man, thank you. I was having such a rough day. And I literally was at like my wits end, but because of the fact that you brought that smile to me changed my whole entire day. Yeah. It's those moments that I think you, that allows me to have that, characteristic to be able to do you know just kind of stepping out the box and being able to be okay to be unusual different Different, yeah yeah well my mom always told me don't ever don't ever be like everybody else Mm -hmm. you know you're different be different yeah and putting on a costume like i play mrs claus i play i play the easter bunny Mm -hmm. um the wicked witch you know um i do a lot of stuff like that Mm -hmm. so i can bring a smile to somebody or i'll go to the um the facilities that have the um senior living the senior living and you know take santa claus with me or the easter Mm -hmm. bunny and give them an egg or a candy or easter basket you know um it just brings a smile to their face and and i think i get a lot of that too with the humanitarian side of me the empathy is where i'm trying to always do different things Outside of the normal realm mm-hmm. is where I'm trying to do it. So I get that a lot from you. Um, Mom, I just want to thank you for being a part of this first show. Um, never my intentions to embarrass or underappreciate you. I apologize if at any time you felt a certain type of way about me. But please know my love for you is countless. It's infinite. Um, I think leaving here today, I have a new respect and realization of the things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that were going on in your life. Thank you um, for your time. And again, thank you for being a part of this show. I hope it wasn't too bad, but I love you, mom. Uh, <laughs> love you we'll be too, back son. after this after this break. That's good. It wasn't bad. And welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, My next guest looks like me in 20 years. He's the other part of the reason I'm blessed to be here. Uh, We share the same football team, hardworking when it comes to our jobs and dedicated to whatever projects we get into. Please help me welcome Pat. Again, like my mom, it's weird calling you by your first name, but I guess I'll take that pass for right now. Uh, and I apologize because I don't like normally doing that. But 
please let the audience know um, how many kids you have in the age ranges. Well, I have five. Um, my oldest is Christina. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't know their ages offhand, but I know their <laughs> birth dates. Yeah. So she was born in 83. Yeah. Patrick is 84. Uh-huh. Alicia in uh, 99. Uh-huh. And Jasmine in, um, in uh, 95. Yeah. It's funny. I seen a bit on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. And they asked the mom, they're like, like two questions about the kids. And then the mom goes off and she like says like a bunch of different stuff. And then the dad's like, they asked the dad a question. The dad's like, I can tell you like when they were born and what they like and total different atmosphere. Nothing carried away from the other. It's just they had their own way of um, being able to remember things. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I was just thinking about that right now. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. At what age did you have your first child? 18. I was uh, just out of high school. Mm-hmm. And um, you're trying to figure out what your game plan is going to be. And so started dating and ended up having a first child at 18. Yeah. What was that like, though? Scary. Yeah. It was scary because you're, you feel like you're, independent, invincible, invincible, you know, you're, uh-huh. you're ready to take on the world. And yet at the same time, you can make uh, rash decisions that are going to change your whole life. Yeah. Um, at that time, would you say that the weight was carried more on fathers because they felt that they had that responsibility? Or would you say it was kind of like just both on, on uh, the, the weight was on both sides? The way it was on both sides, it was definitely, um, depending on what kind of, uh, the way you looked at it, mm-hmm. what aspect for the male, it was always, what do you plan to do? What are you going to, uh, how, if you're going to get a job, how are you going to take care of your family? Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of decisions are you going to make? But on the flip side of that, the female was going to, I'm going to have a baby. What am I going to do with my body changes? Mm-hmm. How am I going to hide it? Mm-hmm. What am I going to tell my parents? And what am I going to do from that? You know, yeah. so, and then mind you, nine times out of 10 in my, in my generation, women didn't work yeah. or they weren't able to go and have a baby and work at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you had to choose, you know, you were pretty limited on what you were going to end up doing. Okay. Okay. In the next part, like earlier, I'm going to ask you a series of questions uh, to be truthful. And no, I understand if the answers don't fit to what I may think or hear, like if it doesn't like necessarily go against or it doesn't go with my narrative, whatever case is. Um, I'm older, so I understand. I kind of get it now. Um, how did you prepare when you f- were first told that you were going to be a father? Wow, that was uh, that's a deep question. That's yeah. um, I don't know that you initially prepare. Yeah. First part of it is fear because you're a young 18 year old, you know, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what you're doing. Um, a lot of it is is self reflection. You're like what I want to do with, with my dreams. And then at the same time, you're like, what am I going to do to create my family? Yeah. How am I going to like, uh, make the best decisions for, for my children? Mm-hmm. When I was 18, I wanted to go to the military. Yeah. I come from a Marine family, mm-hmm. military background. And my first choice was to be a Marine. Mm-hmm. And at that time, because of, uh, having a child, my firstborn, yeah. uh, I chose the lesser of the two, which mm-hmm. in, in all reality, I would have liked to be in the Marine, but I chose to be here for my family mm-hmm. and start and take care of my family. Okay. Growing up and having our differences, um, good and bad, if there was one thing you changed about me, what would it be and why? Well, I don't know if that I would change anything. I just would try to be, connect with you a little bit better mm-hmm. when, when you were younger. Um, because we had a, uh, a life full of hurdles mm-hmm. when we're young. Yeah. And so we come from, uh, I separated when I was uh, younger. Yeah. Uh, after my marriage, we separated and you guys lived separately. So I would have uh, liked to have communicated with you a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, you were the the one child that I wasn't able to connect with at a youth. At a, and at I was a young very, age. I was very hard headed though. I mean, granted, <laughs> you know, the hard headedness comes in Artea's blood. Like we just were very passionate at the same time. But so I apologize because I mean, I should have that door should have been open both ways. 
Um, I'm realizing now everything's a two-way street. You don't answer or you hold the guilt like, oh, because they're not going to answer. I'm, I'm going to play the same game. And I'm like, no, like it's a two-way street. Like I got to make sure I'm doing my part as well. So with that being said, I, I wanted to apologize for that as well because I, I should have not been so um, closed off, I guess, in a sense. Just close-minded. Yeah. Just in your own world. Yeah. Um, I recently went into a deprivation tank. Um, when I was, I'm still kind of doing it right now. I'm in this wellness and recovery path. So uh, I decided to do a deprivation tank. Uh, you're pretty much in an egg um, inside water for about an hour in pure darkness. And before I went in, they told me like, some people see vision, some people see colors. Everybody reacts differently. When I was in that tank, um, it took me to a time, a memory of me and you, when I was little, I think we were at a house off of 67th and Thomas. I'm not sure who owned that house. I'm not sure literally anything of it. In that vision, it didn't have sound or anything else. It was just, a, it was a really quick, really brief memory. Um, and it was us watching the Dallas Cowboys game. You were on a recliner, I think. And maybe we were arguing. I'm not even sure. But at that moment, it felt serene. Like it was pure serenity. Um, we were just watching the Dallas Cowboys game. And I think that's the reason why I've been so um, passionate for my Dallas Cowboys. Because of the fact that no matter what me and you were going through, we are, we're always able to connect through those Dallas Cowboys games. And that's the reason why I'll never give it up. It's just because of the fact that that bond that we had with the Dallas Cowboys game. Mm -hmm. Do you remember a funny or memorable story of me when I was little? Well, um, one in particular probably was uh, when you were little. Mm -hmm. um, I remember a lot of uh, visions from yeah. both my children, you know, you, Tina and you, yeah. um, when you guys were younger, but um, mainly just uh, dressing you up. Yeah. I always wanted to try to, theme you yeah and so in my when I, as i was growing up the bobby brown yeah coming out and then uh uh bell bib devoe yeah type of uh, era i uh -huh. tried to dress you up cut your hair uh dress you up as yeah. <laughs> in some of the outfits so at that time yeah it was kind of reliving what was going on in the world mm -hmm. for myself with you okay and so i would just dress you up and try to you know yeah have you be uh in style okay yeah, I remember the the Aquanet uh, <laughs> hairdo that I would do before we would go to church and then <laughs> getting to church and we would be deaf. Like we could not hear anything because you had that loud system. Mm -hmm. um, it was just the bass literally would just like, you know, we yeah. would get to church and people would think that we were like pop block. And it's like, no, nah, it's just the, the bass is trying to set a little bit. So, um, No, I'm just a big fan. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, sometimes when I... Vibe too. He does. He does have that vibe. Yeah. Sometimes when I look at the past decade, I wonder what could I have done differently if I'm doing a good enough job and what will be the outcome of my sons when they become adults. Looking back at yourself as a parent, um, is there anything that you would have done differently or changed? I think that if given, given what I've no, now mm -hmm. because we're older in life and we've gained a, a, a big part of uh, experience and knowledge. I think I would tell myself that um, stay true to your dreams. Whatever you want to do, you can accomplish them. Okay, but be dedicated because whatever you choose takes a lot of hard will mm -hmm. and determination. And I think that whatever most people put their mind to, whether it's being the president or being. Uh, in the in the working world, blue collar, mm -hmm. okay, you can be great at doing those things. You just have to tell yourself to to be true to true to what you want to do. Yeah. So I know I'm an oddball, always doing crazy things. Sometimes you probably wonder and ask yourself, like, why is he doing this again, or what is he doing now? What is something I do that embarrasses you? Um, and don't say these questions because I really put thought process into <laughs> these questions. So. Well, I don't think I don't think that anything to me embarrasses because that's what I am proud of you for. Yeah. That's what I like each one of my children because they each have individualism. Uh -huh. um, my Tina is, is a mother. Yeah. She's always been my second in charge. She's yeah. always been the tough one. Mm -hmm. The one that knows um, how to, how to manage 
you know, and, and overcome. Yeah. And you've always been the creative one. You've always been one to like, let my mind flow. And what am I going to do? And, you know, I used to watch you for hours, play with your toys and yeah. your stuff and just be self-contained, you yeah. know, because you, that you, you were going to blossom. And I yeah. knew that was going to happen. So I don't think I've ever been embarrassed. I've been, uh, you know, just thinking that, you know, Hey, that's your way. Yeah. Okay. I always hear my mom and you say how young you both were when you had the both of us, um, how different you both are. I wonder because of some of that conversation I've had with both of you, uh, was I a planned child or were, yeah, was I a planned child? I think subconsciously you were. Uh -huh. I think that because when I first had my first daughter, uh -huh. I wanted a son. Okay. I wanted another child close to Tina's age yeah. because, you know, she was going to be able to have somebody to fall back on, lean uh -huh. on and stuff. So I think financially might not have been the best idea, but I think deep in my heart, yes, I think you were planned. Okay. If you would have never had a son, you would have had, you know, say just minus me right now. Would you have kept on trying until you hit that boy? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it is important to me, uh -huh. but I've, I, I have all girls. Yeah. So I don't think that um, it would have been something that I, that I needed. I, I, I fall back on religion mm -hmm. and God, whatever God provides for you. Yeah. And so God provided me with the first daughter mm -hmm. and I was fortunate to have a son. And yeah. then after that I had girls. And so that was it. I just, okay. whatever turned up, turned up. Yeah. Um, what do you do? What did you think I was going to be when I was a child? And have I lived up to those expectations? <laughs> you know, I didn't, I don't really know because I just saw, I saw potential. Yeah. I just saw that you were creative in your singing and your just playing and imagination and, and whatever you were, were your talent shows, uh -huh. you, you were gonna, your, your mind just expanded. Okay. So I didn't know what you would be. Uh -huh. but I knew you would be great at it. And my outlook on today, uh -huh. I think that you're a great dad. I think you have a great heart. And I think that you have the ability to uh, affect okay. a lot of people around you. And I'm happy for you. And I'm proud of you for that. What would you say I would need to change? Like my mom mentioned about, you know, the devices, which I agree wholeheartedly. What would you say in addition to that, that I should be able to maybe do differently to become even better of a parent leaving here today? I don't think that I would say change, but something you might want to add to your, uh, to your plate uh -huh. would be just to um, add new, such as technology, such as the way our, our, our world is going. Okay. But don't forget about the past uh -huh. because a lot of times we want, we want technology, but everything comes mm -hmm. with a price. Everything's an A and a B. Yeah. The A side is we want technology. We want things faster, better, and, and, and convenient. Yeah. But we tend to forget about the baseball, the going outside, drinking out of the water hose, uh -huh. riding the bikes, playing tapes, staying up all night, taping music, that you didn't get on, on media yeah. and you know, you had to work for it, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Those are, those are essentials that I think that kids are losing today yes. that, that my generation values uh -huh. and, and misses today in the new. Yeah, that I got to agree because when I try to play with like Emmett or Ethan, like, Hey, let's go outside. It's hot. Yeah. They don't want to do it. They just want to sit there and, and be on their tablet or whatever. So they do need that outside world. So. Yeah. And we just took a trip um, and we went to the beach. And I remember just standing there. Yeah. Nothing was even said or anything else. We were just there. And the boys came up to me. They're like, this is fun. We weren't doing much. We were just letting the waves come and hit us. We were, you know, just enjoying the beach. No sound, no nothing at all. When we left, they say, thank you for, you know, for bringing me here. We appreciate it and everything else. And that meant a lot because of the fact that normally I get so confined into work, the work schedule. I'm at work at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm there till three or four o'clock in the afternoon. My mind is always work. And to be able to get that disconnect, and even with social media recently, I was able to kind of appreciate myself that I actually took that jump and say, you know what, like I'm going to take some time, just I'm going to shut my devices off. We're going to enjoy, you know, this time that we're here. And it was nice. 
I enjoyed myself. And if I could add one more thing to that, um, yeah. it's funny because I, I would hope you remember, but when we were little, uh -huh. we used to go camping a lot. And that is just the ultimate disconnect yeah. because you have trees, you go through the forest, you go to the water, you play in the water, it's ice cold. You know, you can find everything to do. We used to play fort, climb up the mountains, whatever. And you were little, you play in the dirt, you know. Whatever the case, we stay up late, make marshmallows, talk stories. Mm -hmm. You know, it was some of the greatest times. And you know what? I'm as guilty as anybody else that we've gotten away from that. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. Nobody does the stuff that we grew up on that made our families tight and 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 so much glued together because yeah. it was it was the stuff that we knew. But now we've gotten away from it and we just go through the iron gates of, of society, just you know, learning and and what is technology got, you know, and how do we get there? And what's the easiest way to get there? Mm -hmm. And it's just changed so much. And even when, as simple as just finding directions on where to get to somewhere. Let yeah. me just look it up on GPS. Yeah. And even to extend with that conversation, I have to agree because even like as brothers and sisters, like even I find where I'm guilty, where if I ask my boys, that's your cousin, that's your cousin. Half the time they don't even know, but because of the fact that we've, um, been so far away just reaching out and saying, hey, you know what, let's just hang out, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's let our kids play with each other so that way they can kind of see who their family is. So I I, I get it and I understand with, with that statement right there. Um, when I was about to have my first child, I was overwhelmed with anxiety um, and anxiety was through the roof. Um, it didn't actually hit me that I was a father until I was in the hospital. I was asleep and in the back of my head, I heard this baby crying and I was asking myself like, why is there a baby crying? And then it hit me. I'm like, shoot, that's my child. That moment is when I knew my life was about to change. At what point did you know you were going to be a father for the first time? Well, um, when my wife at the time, which was going to be my wife, um, let me know that, that it was, she was pregnant yeah uh, telling me and from that point just uh telling the important individuals around our family yeah you no know, my parents her parents and you know just the uh, as you say the anxiety you know just trying to figure out what you're going to do at that time you know what was that conversation like with your parents wow from uh, <laughs> it, it was deep yeah it was um very hard. Uh -huh. um, I remember, you know, with my two parents. I think I come from 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 a very strong, stern father yeah. uh, and mother. I'm closer to my mother, but I I have a lot of my father. My father's um, stubbornness, uh -huh. uh, overcome yeah. type type mentality. But I think that it bothered me more when I had to tell my mom because I had to sit down and the bond I shared with my mom is uh, unequivocal to anything else I can imagine. And yeah. um, having to sit down as an 18 year old and tell her that, you know, her dreams and aspirations for what I was gonna do were all gonna be changed mm -hmm. overnight. Yeah. And um, and then what was I gonna do? That, that, that was hard. And and I went through a short period where she didn't talk to me. Yeah. And, um, and I had to figure out, you know, just, let her go through her course. I think it was actually easier with my father, uh -huh. you know, because he was, um, it, it was probably just course of nature, you know, yeah. uh, men grow up, men, boys, men play, yeah. men grow up, have a family, men support family yeah, and so forth. Okay. What is your best memory of fatherhood? Well, there's so many. Um, just staring in you guys' eyes, watching yeah. you guys as you guys grew, what you're gonna do, what what caught you guys in a in the in the moment, um, what were you guys' interests, uh -huh. how you guys are gonna grow up. Um, there were so many. I, I it's hard to limit just okay. to one, yeah. but just to see, you know, as you guys changed with yeah. the times and, and the little funny quirky moments that I had with my children. Yeah. I think of what my kids will say when my time passes and what my story will say about me. I want my family to know that no matter what, I was always proud of them and I never stopped loving them. 
in the end for your kids and your grandkids, what do you want your legacy to say about you? Well, I come from the old generation. So I would, I would say that he was a, he was a hard ass. Mm -hmm. He was one that was going to fight for his family. Yeah. Do whatever he could. Um, you know, he was a, he was a hard worker. He was good father to take care of his family. Yeah. But that, um, as we get older in season uh -huh. that, uh, I softened up, learned to understand, learned to listen and, uh, <clears throat> and try to have some compassion. Okay. Being your only son and as different as I am, if I was never born, what would your life be like today? Oh, I really don't know. We just, you, you try to evolve in, in the best way that you can. And so I'm happy with my girls. Yeah. I'm happy with my son. And so whatever God provided, I was going to make the best of it. Okay. Dad, I thank you for being a part of the show. Hopefully this wasn't so bad and you had a little fun. This wasn't just some questions. I've always actually wanted to ask these questions and to take an opportunity while I still have the both of you. I'm very fortunate to have the both of you. I know I wasn't always the best of child, but hopefully as a parent, you can truly be proud of the person I've become and becoming. I apologize for any hurt or ill will you may have felt I did over the years, but please know we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for those moments in the past. Thank you for your time, Dad. I love you. We'll be back after this break. Abari Entertainment Films present There's Only One Name for News with Damon and Aisha. Abari Live Podcast. Habari Entertainment, a race against time. On a quest for glory. Habari News Weekly, HabariEntertainment.com. Catch us for more. Visit us. AbariEntertainment.com. Welcome back. Hopefully the questions I was able to ask my parents opens the conversation for you out there to ask your parents or your kids. I challenge you all out there to start a conversation with your parents or your kids. See what they wonder. They have questions for. Don't let time pass and leaving each other with doubts or those, or those questions. In the next part of the show, I'll call the no, the O, oh, and the laugh. Nobody's gonna know. Oh. <laughs> I want to be able to give out a random hack, fun fact, or message and joke. The hack for today is if you eat at Chick-fil-A and you order a kid's meal, you can actually hold the toy and get an ice cream, whether it be in a cup or a cone. So that can be like the trade-off where you can just be like, I'll hold the toy, but just give me the ice cream cone. The message I wanted to say is that the greatest gift you can give your child is your own happiness. Let me say that again in case you didn't hear it. The greatest gift you can give your child is your own happiness. If you're stressed, depressed, or out of it, you feed those emotions to your child. Mentally suppress that ill will and bring out the joy in your kids. And the joke, why do fathers take an extra pair of socks to, uh, when they go golfing? Do you know? Uh, no. Or do you want to take a guess? Extra pair of socks while going golfing. Uh, I can't tell you. It's to, in case they get a hole in one. Oh <laughs> yeah, definitely a dad joke. <laughs> no wonder why the boys didn't want you to use it. <laughs> um, in closing, I do want to give you your flowers because I appreciate you. I see what you're doing with the kids. Um, you're doing an amazing job. Uh, I had fun today having the parents here today. Thank you. So that. I hope you had just as much mm. fun. Uh, I do want to give a huge shout out uh, to today's co-host, my sister, Christina, my guest, my mom, and my dad, and the voice behind the scenes, Habari Live himself, Mr. Dip. Please like and follow Habari Live podcast, Habari Entertainment, and please, please, please check out other shows that he has on there like Habari Live and Wealth for Generations. Please also check out One Love on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Stay safe out there. Stay hydrated. Make it a great day. And we're out.